The NPN transistor is a device that has the ability to control a voltage according to the amount of current it experiences. Basic construction, as the name suggests, we've got an M-type material which joins to a P-type material that's quite thin and that joins again to another N-type material so it forms two PN junctions. The NPN transistor is sometimes also called the bi junction transistor. So we've got two N type materials with a P type material in between. The top N type material is my collector. Bottom N type material is my emitter. And the Birdle P-type material is called my base. The way that it operates is the moment I connect this N and the P-type materials together, I form a depletion layer across the top PN junction as well as the bottom PN junction. Uh, when I connect a positive on the collector and a negative on the emitter, the bottom PN junction starts to become forward biased, but current can't flow yet. So when I supply a voltage that's great enough, in other words, if this is silicone, 0 0.6 volts, if it's germanium, 0 0.3 volts, if I get to that forward bias voltage, then I will have a current flow of electrons from the negative into the n-type material into the p-type material and out of the base. Because I have this influx of electrons into this p-type material, that p-type material loses its status as a p-type material because of the large negative charge that it is experiencing. Because of that negative inside the p-type material that bottom PN junction becomes forward biased and that allows for conduction to take place from the emitter through both PN junctions and out the collector. A symbol for the NPN transistor got our base on the vertical, the emitter has the arrow on it, and then the top one over there is my collector without anything on it. To explain the operation graphically, we can look at the characteristic curve, where we've got the voltage across the collector emitter indicated on the horizontal axis, and the current flow out of the collector pin on the vertical axis. Now when we look at the characteristic curve we see it has many different legs that sticks out like that and each one of these legs represents a different value for the base current. The values of these base currents typically are microamperes whereas the collector current is indicated in milliamperes. The larger my base current becomes, the more the collector current will be. Less base current refers to a smaller collector current. Now as a semiconductor, the transistor seems to have a negative resistance impact. The transistor, when connected into a circuit, will develop for its graph a load line. And that load line represents the line in which it is going to operate. So if I apply that base current to it, it's going to generate that amount of voltage 
and allow that amount of current. Whereas if I allow that size base current, I will develop that voltage and that current. So we can see voltage increases, but the current decreases at the same time. Now the transistor has three areas of operation. The first area, that one over there, that is my saturation. And at the saturation region, we will have maximum amount of current flow and a minimum amount of voltage generated. My second area of operation is this one at the bottom of here, and that is my cut-off region. Cut-off region is when the transistor is technically off. In other words, we can see that when we're in this area, I've got a very high voltage, but a very small current flowing through it. The third and final area of operation is this section over there in the middle. We call this the active region. And that is where the transistor actually operates as an amplifier. In the cutoff and the saturation is when it acts as a switch, in other words, completely off or completely on. And then the set, center section over there it's the active region, and that is where it operates on a varying voltage and current capabilities, depending on the size of the base current that is flowing. When using the transistor as an, in the active region, where it operates as an amplifier, we usually connect a preset voltage across the base and the supply and the base and the emitter in order for controlled voltage output to be generated.